Okay, let's do a, uh, a cool problem. One that I'll admit I often make a mistake on, so I will try not to make a mistake. Here is a small moon, or maybe a Death Star. And, and I'm gonna drop something over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it a really, really far distance away. I'm gonna let go, and I wanna find out when it gets a distance r away, how fast is it going? Now, <clears throat> so it starts at infinity and it ends over here at r uh, with some speed. Momentum principle isn't very good for this because I don't know the time and I can't even use the average velocity like I did before because the force isn't constant. So that's no good. I'm gonna have to use the work energy principle. So here I have, um, let me call this the x direction. Then here, f is gonna be uh, g, this is m1, and this is m2. m1, m2 over x squared, that's the force, <clears throat> and then it'll be negative one, zero, zero. That's, that's the direction of the force. Okay, now I can use the work energy principle because I'm given a distance, but <coughs> I could say work equals a change in energy, and in this case I only have um, kinetic energy for the change in energy. I could do that, but the problem is that the force is not constant. As I get closer, the force gets bigger. So I'm gonna have to integrate to find the work. So I'm gonna say work equals the integral from infinity to r of f dot dr. Okay, so my d, I've already, this is where I make my mistake. I always say, oh look, dr is negative dx, and so f dot delta r, dr is positive. But I've already determined the direction that I'm moving by going from infinity to r. So this is just gonna be the integral from infinity to r, I'll probably still mess it up, but hopefully not, of f g m1 m2 over x squared negative, because it's in the negative direction, dx. Okay, so if I integrate this, um, g m1 m2 is a constant, and I integrate one over x squared dx, I get negative, so that's gonna, oh dear, yes, I'm okay. Okay, so I get <clears throat> work equals, I'll just write it out, uh, I have the negative g m1 m2 over x, let me write this over here, times negative one over x from infinity to r. So I get the work done is g m1 m2 over r minus zero, because if I, if I take the limit as x goes to infinity, I get zero. So this is a positive amount of work done on the object as it moves to this position r. Okay, so now what, and this is important, let me write this over here, work equals g m1 m2 over r. And that's from infinity to position r. So now what if I wanted to find out how fast it was going right there? I could do this. I would do um, work is change in kinetic energy, only change in kinetic. And if I release it from rest at position one, I'll call that one, and this two, then I'm gonna say the work g m1 m2 over r equals the final kinetic energy, k2 minus k1, which is zero. And <clears throat> let's assume it's not going anywhere near the speed of light. Then I can say this is equal to one half m1 v2 squared. So these masses cancel. And I get v2 equals the square root of two g m2 over r, okay? Now you see what a pain that was to integrate because we always make that mistake. So <clears throat> if, I, if I include both of these objects in my system, then I could say, <coughs> I can say instead of work 
work done by gravity equals negative the change in potential of gravity. So delta ug from infinity to r would be negative g m1 m2 over r. And here's the trick. A lot of times we'll just say, since we're talking about at infinity, from infinity, um, let's just call the potential, let's say u g at infinity equals zero. We can say that. So let's say that. And if we say that, then u g at r equals negative g m1 m2 over r. So this really just helps us out a little bit. We can say, what's the potential here? Even though it doesn't really mean too much, we can say that. And then we can talk about the change in potential. How much time have I used? Six minutes. Okay, let's do another problem real quick. <clears throat> but here, let me show you this. It does only depend on r. What if I did the, what if I'm in orbit around this moon now? And so I go from here to there. What's the work done by gravity? Well, along this path, there's my gravitational force, F, and there's dr. And <clears throat> what is true about those is that they're perpendicular. So F dot dr is going to be zero along this path, and so there'll be no work done. No work done, or you could say no change in potential. But both those means the kinetic energy doesn't change. So if this is moving in a circle, it goes at a constant speed. Okay, one quick problem. Back to the moon. I want to show you how you use this. <clears throat> okay, I'm on my moon, and it has a radius of capital R and a mass of MM. Now it's called M2 still. And I'm standing here, and I want to hit a golf ball so that it goes and never comes back. Ever, never, never, ever. How fast would I have to hit it? Well, let's use again the work energy principle. So let me call the ball, is the ball plus the moon so that I can have a gravitational potential energy. But in that case, what's gonna be exerting a force on the ball? Just the gravitational force. And and so I don't have any work done on it. So work equals zero is a change in kinetic plus change in the gravitational potential. And you see here, this is zero because the gravitational interaction is included right there. I don't want to include it twice. <clears throat> so call that position one and out to infinity we'll call position two. If I hit it just fast enough to get an infinite distance away, it'll be going, it'll be stopped at an infinite distance away. So I'll have no kinetic energy. So I'll say zero equals the chain, the final kinetic energy is zero minus one half m v one squared. And then for the change of potential, I'm going to say <clears throat> the final potential energy is going to be at infinity. So zero minus the initial of negative g m one m two over big R. So this is a, a positive number, so then I get one half m v one squared equals g m one m two over R. And and I, there is something I'm assuming here. I'm assuming that the, if I hit this ball off the moon, the moon actually will recoil. But I've assumed that kinetic energy is negligible. And it's an okay assumption for a large moon, but we can look at that later, uh, m1. So these masses cancel, and I get v1 equals the square root of 2g m2 over r. <clears throat> this is called the escape velocity. The escape velocity, and it, and it doesn't matter what direction you hit this at. It only matters about the speed. And so a bigger planet it's easier to escape from. A more massive planet is harder to escape from. So just because something's smaller doesn't mean it's easier to escape from because it depends on the mass too. Okay, I know I went kind of quick. 
but I mean really this work and the potential being negative of that is the most important thing.